gonna stop saying welcome back to Vancouver Carpenter <laughs> until I start doing some carpentry again. Welcome back you guys. Um, I have, we don't need any ums in there. Welcome back. Today I have an angle head. Yes, I'm very excited to be using an angle head from Columbia. So I've already taped this whole place using a two and a half inch one to just try and get the feel. But these are, you know, obviously pretty different than the fleshers in terms of build. Functionally, they do roughly the same thing, but like this is roughly 350, I think, at least. And um, a flusher is like $100. So that's Canadian, you know, it might vary a bit in the US, but you know, that's a big price difference. So the question is, do you get results that are that much better from an angle head over a flusher? And I've been curious to know this for a long time and I've never tried them out until this one job that I'm doing right now. But anyways, let's take a real quick look at this thing up close. So I wish it was brand new out of the box, but I gave it a few test runs. So it's got a little mud on it. But what we have here is like this solid aluminum body right here. And then it's got these wings on it that are made, um, they're made spring by these little springs. So you can see like that, so it can adjust to um, the differences in a corner a little bit. And then the part that smooths the compound are these carbide blades right here. So I don't know if you guys can see that, but it's just this little blade that sticks up about, you know, two mils. And then there's just a little bit of a lip right there that helps it feather the edge. A little bit of a lip right here on that one. This can fill with mud, you know, the whole thing fills. It's got a hole right here, so it can be run on tools that apply mud at the same time as finishing. And um, yeah, it's just a high-tech tool. It's got this thing for the ball socket. So it goes on nice and easy, easier than a regular flusher. But as you can see, you know, I mean, there's a reason that something like this costs 350 when you look at the actual mechanics of it. It's got a little wheel there, it's welded here. It's not just some little bent over piece of tin with <laughs> piece of tin. Who's Tim? Bent over piece of tin with a couple of uh, filed edges. Like this has a lot more going on than an actual flusher. Let's also take a look at a flusher real quick so you get what I'm comparing this to. May as well go inside to the job. All right, so these are my beat up old flushers that I've been using for a long time. I do have a new set of Columbia ones, but they're in a box that's closed. This one was quick and easy to grab. But as you can see, yeah, it's just a bent over piece of tin with a couple other bends, a filed off corner. We've got these aluminum skids right here and a um, little springy thing right there. So it doesn't flex much. And um, then it's got this little ball socket right here that's just more of a friction fit because of this little clip. So this thing works really well, you know. Um, the problem with these ones is they leave the corner a little bit rounded and the older they get, the more round the corners tend to get as this part tends to wear out. And you know, you might get about a year out of one of these. Whereas these guys, these are built to last. As long as you don't completely damage it, you know, like maybe in a few years you need to replace the carbide blades, um, which is probably gonna, I don't know how much that costs, but the point is these are kind of like a lifetime investment and these are, you know, more short term. Um, let's take a quick look at the taped corners that I've got from these. So right over here, unfortunately I did sand it a little bit, so you can't see exactly what it looked like taped. Um, but the first thing I noticed, it's hard to see, but these leave really crisp square corners. And that's because of this sharp edge on the blade right here. So the one thing I found when I was taping these corners in, and it also feathers the edges really nicely and leaves way less mud than these do. So a lot less material to have to sand and a corner that's not built up as much from these ones. However, it wasn't quite that simple. One of the other things I noticed is that as I was pumping the mud into the corner, um, you need a much more consistent amount of mud with these, or it spills out the edges a little bit more, or it doesn't finish as nicely. These are more user-friendly for sure, using the old compound tube in the, you know, using one of these guys. So when I just pump the mud into the corner with one of these on a corner applicator, I don't get super consistent uh, mud quantities. So that's where these end up being really handy, like following behind an auto taper. 
So when somebody follows behind an auto taper, it leaves the perfect amount of mud for these to finish. So these are definitely a precision tool that way. And the other thing I noticed is that because these corners are kind of sharp, you don't get the opportunity to pass over it more than once or twice. Even twice is pushing it. I did find that um, when I went back for a second pass, if I wasn't totally happy with it, this sharp corner would often pull and tear the tape. And I've never had that happen on a flusher. I think partly because the flusher doesn't actually get into the tape as well. So today I finished a bunch of corners with this because I wanted to be able to see how it goes, give it a test run before filming a few. And you can come into this closet right here. Don't mind the booger there. You can see that it leaves such a nice finished edge. It's a really uniform finish, like incredibly good. And this corner is super sharp. It didn't even look like there was going to be enough mud over top of this when the mud was still really wet and translucent. But as it dried, I could see that there is actually enough. And um, I'm gonna have way less sanding to do, like a quick pass with an angle sponge down the middle and a quick pass on the edge. Um, that's all these are gonna need. Like that does such a nice job. But again, the one problem I was having is if I didn't have the right amount of mud on, it didn't work. It wasn't as forgiving as a regular flusher, the cheap flushers. So I also did this room in here this morning. Again, you can see I got some really nice results here. I was leaving a fair bit of mess in the bottoms, as you can see right down there. Once again, that's because if I don't have a more consistent and perfect amount of mud on here, um, well, it has nowhere else to go but the floor or the ceiling. So again, not as forgiving. Uh, I have no idea how long I've been talking, you guys, but I think it is time that we quickly demo these because that's probably what you're here for instead of hearing me just blab about them the whole time. Anyways, I got this here. Okay, so it's really easy to get this on here. Like I said, just a quick, there's a, it's very, you know, there's a lot of play on these. My flushers are much more stiff on there, which in a way I actually kind of like the flushers being a bit stiffer because I find sometimes it's a bit more finicky to get these into the actual corner because it's flopping around on there. Whereas the flusher, you know, it's like, it stays still. So that's actually a little easier for me. The only other problem though, is this tends to fall off. If I'm trying to bang off some excess material, this will fall into the bucket. This won't go anywhere because of that clip. You can see it's a pretty simple design, but it works really well. Okay. So one of the first things you need to do on these is you do need to actually get a little bit of mud on them because um, yeah, that has to be filled up or it's going to leave the first two or three feet empty. All right. You want your mud mixed pretty thin for these. I might not even have it thin enough, but anyways. So what we have on here is just a Can-Am applicator. I kind of like this one, but um, I'm a little rusty, so I'm not getting the mud quite as consistent as I want it to be. Hopefully after doing those two closets, I can do a better job. I'm not going to be doing any of the ceiling ones in here. Uh, maybe I will. I don't know. I was thinking about just doing these uprights. We'll do that long one there. And then maybe we'll do those other two corners in the room with the flusher so we can compare the difference. See how it looks. Okay. I just tried a really quick run. My mud was too thick. So we're thinning it down. That's soupy. That's about as thin as I usually have it for my flusher too. Helps it glide faster. Okay. That ah, feels a little better. If it's too hard to pull out, it means you probably have the material too thick. Okay, here's the corner I was starting on that I'd made a big mess in. So let's not expect great results from this one. That feels better. Oh yeah, there's going to be way too much material on that one. I just have to live with it. It's 
That one looks a lot better. Maybe a bit thick in some spots, but a lot better. Bit thin right here. Okay. That's not bad. A little bit thick, but just go with it. Okay, that looks pretty good. And let's do this one. Why is there a door open? Okay, how is it? A little thin, a little thin. I'm just gonna go with it. We'll see what happens if it's a bit too thin up there. Not the best angle to see from, but. Okay, so let's start with this one that's got too much. Okay, these tall angles are kind of annoying. I'm gonna push hard at the top. So it takes a little more effort I found to push on this. Uh, yeah, needs another pass. You can see it's not full there, but maybe by my second pass up, it'll be good. Well, when it's good, it's good. At the top, I didn't have enough mud. I'm just gonna live with that. Let's try this one. It could also be me not pushing hard enough. Oh, almost perfect on the first one. Okay, I'm happy with that one. I like the way that one looks. Yeah, nice feathered edges. And it looks like there's not enough mud on there, but once it dries up, it ends up being just right. Okay, let's try this one. Oh, that was a messy one. Oh, got some crud, crud in the blade. left a couple of lines right here. You can see those. Probably just something I didn't sand out of the corner. Messy, messy, messy. I can only imagine what a nice job these do when you use them on a corner box. Because I mean, the results I'm getting, like where it's perfect is so perfect. Oh, there's not enough mud on there now. I'm gonna start from the bottom. Yeah, you don't get too many passes on these. And um, there's that head flopping around. There we go. All right, I'm happy with that. But yeah, it seems like it's harder to get a lot of passes on these. You just don't get as many chances to get it right. So I would say, I think when using the tube and applicator, I think that the flushers are actually a little bit better. But I think if you're using auto tools, like an auto taper, I think this is the way to go. Okay, still needs one more pass. Yeah, <laughs> way more material seems to fall down. I mean, I'm still thrilled with the results. Where it's good are the most beautiful corners I've ever done. I can say that much. Okay, we just got these couple here. Okay, so yeah, I mean, it looks really good. It's just more messy, more finicky. Um, yeah, it take me some practice to really get these dialed in. I gotta get better on my mud application because I'm putting too much mud on the wall. That's why it's dripping everywhere. 
So let's try a, let's try a flusher. See what sort of results we get from that. Okay, let's stick with the Columbia tools this time, eh? We got a nice three inch Columbia flusher here. Um, I do also wanna note, thank you to Columbia for generously contributing the tools for these videos. Yeah, I guess this video has actually turned into angle heads versus flushers. <laughs> let's do those couple of uprights in this other room here. I forgot how thick my mud was and I put too much on. Oh, that's the thing. By the time I get the hang of the tools, my jobs are always done. Okay, that should be enough. Okay, let's try this one. This is a three inch and I think I still have too much mud there. those definitely leaves a lot more mud in the corner but let's do the next one these are easier <laughs> I'm just gonna be honest you guys the fleshers are way easier hmm. well um, I don't know if you guys can see it but that was really easy I think, to be totally honest, I think I know my preference. The flushers took less effort to push, still did a more than adequate job. Um, quick little bit to clean up right here. Yeah, I don't know. That was so easy. I think I know which ones I'll be sticking to. I'm grateful to have had a chance to use those um, angle heads, but it's clear to me that the angle heads require like the high end precision tools. Like you got to use an auto taper or a mud runner or a corner box. So there's all these different tools that are like high end, you know, full time, like tape and everyday taper tools. Whereas the flushers, those are so much more user friendly for a guy like me that does this, you know, intermittently. Hmm. Still made a mess on the floor but it wasn't as bad. Interesting, interesting. You know what else I think a really good combo was is um, I think actually using the angle head for taping because it makes the tape, it creases the tape way sharper and then using a flusher to finish is actually really nice. So I'm stoked I tried that. I might actually stick to that method. Angle head for taping, flusher for finish. Um, I don't think you can reverse the order because I'm pretty sure that the flusher will leave the tape too round and the angle head will dig in. From my years being on drywall talk and reading about that stuff, I'm pretty sure that was the consensus. Anyways, you guys, um, hopefully you got something out of this video if you've been wondering about the difference between angle heads and flushers. Angle heads are a precision tool that are a little harder to use but will get you nicer results. Um, they're just a little bit harder. The flushers give you more than adequate results and are much more user-friendly and more economic. So um, yeah, that's what I have to say about that. Flushers versus angle heads video, all done. Anyways, thanks for watching. I got more videos to make, got some flat boxes to run. So um, stay tuned for that. Thanks for watching, till the next video. All right, now hang on just one second, you guys. I got a last minute editor's note. I'm just finishing up this video, getting ready to put it out. But after sanding the corners, I think it's worth my time to get used to using the angle heads because that was the easiest sanding I've ever done. I ran my corner sponge on a corner pole, uh, not on a corner pole, like my corner sponge on a painting pole down the corners and then I took the Festool vacuum sander and quickly buffed the edges and they were almost perfectly finished. Barely had to light detail them, sand them, anything. Like, so that's one thing, way less sanding. So a way crisper corner, way less sanding than the flushers. So in my opinion, now that I have them, I might take the time to actually try and get better with them because um, yeah.
a lot less time in the corners. Anyways, now I'm done. Till the next one, you guys.